there guys, M Tim Tam here. Today we're going to go through the render layers and the render passes within the Maya plugin of Octane Maya. Uh, here I have the standard scene, uh, I think it's called the kernel box scene, but custom made, uh, going through, which has very um, variety of different lighting um, materials, no textures, just uh, materials. Um, so we're going to learn how to render this out in its own separate uh, order um, to composite it within what would be a beauty pass, but to have more control over um, diffuse, shadows, reflection, refraction, transmission, such as scattering. So um, I'll be handing up the scene since the uh, there's a, since I wanted the overscan to be this small and um, everything. So I'll be saving this um, this scene how it is right now. Okay, so the first thing what I'm going to do is work out which render layer you want to be your base. Uh, the base is usually the surface um, that's going to be capturing everything. Uh, for this scene, the surface is going to be the this box, um, which is going to have the um, ambient occlusion, um, the shadows, and everything. So within the poly surface shape or the shape layer, where we have the mesh types, you're going to change it to movable proxy. Every single object make it a movable proxy just to be safe. Um, also change your rendering settings to your octane rendering settings to movable proxies for rendering. Now we have to allocate it to which octane layer ID you want it to be. So the surface is going to be one. It's pretty much already default. For your each individual um, object, you're going to have to change it to a different layer. However, if you're making a brick fence and you want that to be its own, if it's own different objects, obviously that fence is going to be within layer two or three. Um, but if the uh, fence, uh, let's say you have a fence post that's a different texture, maybe you want to put that to octane three. Um, tiles or bricks. Even though they're different objects, each individual object you want it to be on its own separate layer. These, however, are individual different objects that I want to edit them differently. So this is going to be Octane Layer 2. This is going to be Octane Layer 3. This is going to be Octane... This goes to Rigid Shape, which is annoying. Uh, this goes to Octane Layer 4. And this to Octane Layer 5 as the ID. So once that's all sorted um, we are going to go to the rendering settings and we are going to go to direct lighting uh, click on alpha channel and shadow make sure they're both ticked we're going to go to the GI mode diffuse to get some um, indirect color um, color bleeding that's obviously changed to uh, movable proxies and here we have the render layer passes Let's just close this just to make it less cluttered. Um, here we have the render layer passes. Um, these are already checked for everything, but uh, we're going to go through them. I want you to check direct, diffuse, direct, diffuse, indirect, reflection, direct, reflection, indirect, refraction, transmission, subset scattering, shadows, and ambient occlusion, and render layer ID. Also click on AO Alpha Shadows. So, we have this preview pass here, which can preview the rendering that you're seeing. Um, and obviously, on render layers, check Enable Renders and go to Active Octane Layer ID. Um, let's put the preview pass to beauty. And let's just flick through the layers. So, let's go to Active Layer ID. We have a uh, reflective ball, active layer ID three. We have the uh, there's a special word for it. I'm just going to call it donut. Uh, four and five, all in its own respective octane render layers. However, we have to get rid of all of the different sort of features for it. So the preview layer, we're going to go to direct diffuse one. Um, and as you can see, it has all the other different ones that we'll be using. The uh, Global Nation, this one, these don't have the reflection for it as a transmission. Um, but we're going to 
strip it through for on the first layer. Now I've written up a notebook pad here that has the render layers that we have to go through. Now unfortunately uh, the way that it's made so far they're thinking of adding like different individual numbers um, with commas. Um, that's a feature of Crest that's been said a lot. Um, due to this um, tedious process I'm just going to render out different PNG sequences However, if you're not dealing with render layers, but one big stock, you can use an open EXR image. Um, and if you have any problems loading the open EXR exporting, delete your preferences in the documents. This will get rid of any saved tabs and shelves, but it will pretty much reset your settings. And then you'll have your open EXR enabled. So, let's go through the first one. So the first uh, passes we have to do is Diffuse, direct, no shadow. Now, what does this mean, no shadow? It means that we have to change this to diffuse direct, okay? And we have to uh, save a version that doesn't have any shadows here because we want to edit our own shadows, which we can do. So let's go through each object and press the octane shadow visibility. And let's click that off, and that gets rid of the shadow. Um, so let's go through each object and click off the shadow. Once that's done, we now have this uh, diffuse direct, and we can save that as a PNG. Uh, bear in mind that um, these samples are going to be a bit off since I'm not really keeping up to the standard um, pixels. Since um, I'm just going to render it, give it a few seconds, and change it. Um, we are going to then. Uh, go to the octane uh, we are then going to go to the different octane render layers of the different ones for the direct diffuse so number two doesn't have any uh, number three does so save number three um, number four does so save number four um, number five doesn't so those are the ones that we need for the diffuse direct no shadow so obviously we're going to have to re-click on the visibility shadows for all objects that we clicked off since that's the rest that we don't need for the shadows. Now we're going to, the next on the list is the diffuse indirect. And here we need the following layers 1, 3 and 4. Um, so if we go through the render layers previewing we have this nice colourful colour balance. We have not two, we have three with the uh, donut and four. So let's click on, let's so cl let's click and save all of those layers. Uh, so you need to render off uh, layers three and four now. So let's go to re render layer three and uh, render out the donut and the square. All right, so once you've um, render the diffuse indirect. We're now going to do the reflection indirect and we're going to render off the layers 2, 4, and 5. Once you've rendered those, uh, then you can move your way up to refraction and you only have to render layer 2, I believe. Be sure to put your specular bounce above 2. I put mine to 5 since it wasn't showing up. I was a bit getting a bit worried. So render off uh, number 2, we are then going to go to the transmission and go back to render layer 3. Uh, this is going to take a while to render, so um, be prepared for subsurface scattering. We are then going to go to subsurface scattering on the same layer, 3. That's pretty, pretty quick. We are then going to go to shadows and we're going to go to uh, enable layer 1. And then we're going to go to 2, 3, and 5. So pretty much layers 1 to 5. Once you have rendered all the shadows, um, make your way up to the ambient occlusion and render layers 1 to 5. Okay, so once you have... So once you have finished rendering all of your various layers, um, it's time to chuck them into your compositing program um, to which uh, you can then merge all these together since um, uh, I might do a tutorial on this within itself um, that might be a bit later 
but I'm going to quickly put this all together in Nuke, and I'll just show you the final preview for it. Okay, so I have arranged the node graft and its respected layers. So diffuse AO, shadow GI, um, SS, um, trans, um, mission, reflection, refraction. And I have gotten a good result, um, very surprisingly. Um, this one over here is the beauty pass, and this one over here is the composited. There are a few things I can see with it all, with it all joined. Um, the first is that the I don't I think this is purely because of the bounces, but I can't see any of the sort of um, diffuse um, uh, coloring from this one to this one, as you can see here. Um, also, with this one, I think this is purely from the amount of bounces I don't have. Is that I can't see the uh, the indirect from this one to this one. And yeah, I'm having some trouble with the uh, colouring on this one. For some reason, I think the AO is a bit um, out of whack. That's sort of overriding the... Uh, actually, it goes from good there, good there, goes good there. Oh wait, I found the culprit. Alright, so it's a trans. Okay, so... Um, let's get back. Multiply... Alright, so that, that looks a lot better. Alright, so yeah. A few tweaking around, but it all works out well. Um, I can see the emitter is in there. That's because we didn't do the emitter pass, but um, apart from that, that's how we get renderlized to work. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for any more Maya tutorials.